Welcome back to Waconia 2019, featured Snowville Skidoo. We're moving on now, look at some of the other sleds that have showed up today to be in part of our show. Wakefield here along with Les Finn and Les 73 Arctic Caddy XT with a 440 Kawasaki motor left. Yes, they, they had, they've tried to look for different motors and everything else around and so they went to Kawasaki and Japan motor and it was designed right at right as a race motor. You see the way the hood is made to, to suck the air in, lighter skis, everything with aluminum tunnel. The main thing about this was tried to be lightweight to be faster to beat the competition. They started building more for the racing race sleds because they felt the racing sold sleds. And that was the main thing, trying to get that. But you see their ski shocks on there to deaden the blow as, 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 and get a better ride. Slide rail suspension, and they even went to titanium cleats, a real light cleat, and uh, more for more they were run on ice than anything else. Hey, last guess who showed up? Uh, committee member Baldy Stephenson's along with us here today. Baldy, what do you think of this Waconia show 2019? Yeah, we did okay this year. You know, it was a little bit of a snow condition problem, but the snow came just in time. Yep. And uh, we got a nice crisp day, but it's the sun is shining. Everything's cool. Yep. I like all the reflections on the hood. Right, yeah. right. They're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Shined up, aren't they? Take a look at these right here with the engine sticking out. That is the hot ticket. Right. To, to see the uh, free air engines. And uh, you can see they all have openings to uh, allow the cooling. And this is what is sizzle. And we got a 1973 Rupp Magnum here uh, with the Tohatsu 440 Baldi. Do you know anything about that one at all? Okay. Les, can you tell us? Yeah, one about thing that about one? that's another Japanese motor designed sure. right for racing. That was the main thing. You'll see here they have the shotguns over here, but they kick the spindle out a little bit further so the ski sticks out a little more. More stability as they're going through the sure. corners. This is a rubber track, 15 inch. Uh, racetrack with a uh, slide rail suspension on it, dual carb Tillerson carburetors. It was made with the pipes and everything else made for racing. Loud exhaust, but it mainly, the more speed, it was made for marketing. They wanted to get this out to the people, show, hey, we're winning on the racetrack and they can sell to the public. Now, everybody wants the next one. I'll step out of the Baldi. shot here, and Baldy will tell us a little bit more about the 71 Viking Vanquisher. Yeah, now here's a different approach. Viking did the metal flake to like nobody else. You could get this in all kinds of colors. Of course, in Minnesota, it's a Minnesota orphan. That that Viking purple was the hot ticket. Even the dashboard here is uh, is metal flake. Viking had a long run. They they, uh, they 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 made these for many years and had a solid solid background here. So we're so proud to see that uh, these uh, Minnesota icons are, are surviving and uh, we can see all this metal flake here today. What kind of motor is this? Where is this made? This is a German motor, Hearth. Yeah, and made it to, yeah, it made into a, a free air yep. to make more power. The, yep. uh, that's what the and main the thing is. the pipes went down and around to the back. Yep. Very looking, very nice design. Okay, so we've had Arctic Cat, Ruff, Viking, and now we got our first Polaris for the day. We got a 72 Polaris Starfire with a Fuji motor. Left. This is a made in Japan again, made specialty for the snowmobiles. Once they could make their own motors and everything else, they could change the design, make them lighter weight, and could raise the power and work with the torque converters. This here had the hood like this here to cover the motor up, and then the air, free air, would come in here and cool the motor. Pipes. They put the pipes on the outside because that way they get wouldn't have so much restrictive air underneath the hood. You'll see chrome skis and chrome shocks to make it look more fabulous. Again, all aluminum tunnel and uh, just a little gas tank, about a three gallon gas tank. Speed on or tack on were standard, but again, this was made for racing and it was to sell snowmobiles. All right, so this next, we got something very unique. Well, look at that. Racer clothes. This is not a real snowmobile. However, it was made by Jet Dynamics and Insane Cloud. 
and they've taken some liberties here. The blue metal flake, they actually made metal flake hoods. But notice the condition here. Giant motor, no room for pipes. Polaris would put pipes outside of their hood, but this was actually invented by a Canadian company, Boaski decided that the only way they were going to get all this exhaust out with these big motors and a small hood was to go upward. So this is a three chamber deal. The funny thing about this is when you're driving down the field, the exhaust comes up and into your face. It, uh, it, you get a little dizzy after a while. <laughs> this is a special design race motor made by Germany by Hertz. It was a three cylinder, 793, put out 80 horsepower. It's kind of cool, you look at all this here. So how do you put gas? The gas tank was right in the front. It was hard to get gas in here, but it was a design. It was just super cool. And the main thing, like Baldy says, you look cool on the racetrack, no matter if you win or lose. Hey, you look cool. That's what it's all about. It's to sell snowmobiles, and and everybody remember. Did you see that sled? Wow! And we got another rare racing factory racing sled here from Skidoo. Uh, Let's tell us a little bit about this one here. This is a 1971 with a 797cc motor. This is the biggest motor they made back then. They, 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 there was others that made them bigger, but they had a different class. This here was a, this was made mainly for racing in a class five, 800 class. Uh, again, free air, just a special design. It was most, it was only sold to racers and they had to fill out the papers and get the okay before they could race it. And it All right, next we got going to talk to us next about the moto scheme. tell us a little bit more about this machine. Yeah, this is a Quebec manufacturer, Moto Ski Skidoo out of Quebec, Canada. Now notice the interesting thing about this racer is it's a very small motor, displacement wise. Only a 340, but look, one, two, and three cylinders. So they found that uh, for maximum race performance, build these small pistons and get them a spinning. So that's a, that's a three cylinder engine, but a rather small displacement. Beautiful sled. After this happened, uh, Skidoo bought this motor ski out, and this is a Rotex motor in this one. And you'll see that it has a tachometer and uh, three cylinders. They found out that it put out, it was a little too heavy and it was hard to keep compression in it. So this only was produced in one year. They produced it in Skidoo and in motor ski. And one thing you see is how the design is, and then even the back seat back here with the gas tank in front, but this really holds you in like a, a bunk and bronco. You can just sit there and go with it. Hydraulic disc brakes again, which was super nice, especially on uh, racing. It's always positive, it's always there. Okay, we're gonna go to the Scorpion, a Super Sting, 1971. Yep. Guys, what do you think? What a beautiful machine. Look at all the chrome more on this flag, one. More, more metal, metal flake, more metal flake on this. And uh, yeah, made in, made in Crosby, a beloved machine here in Minnesota. And uh, and it has pipes that come back and down and around. Sounds great. And uh, and with this metal flake hood and the black seat, this was the bomb. And one thing about this here, the one thing different about this had the tank in the front, but had the motor right in your lap. So it had this has air cleaners on it. Otherwise, it'd give you a bath. But it, you can see how unique this is. This motor is made in Japan again. This is a custom-made motor by CCW, and uh, it was made just for mainly racing free air. We'll finish this class out with a Rupp 1971 440 Magnum. Again, a very fast race sled. Uh, great build. That's, what can you tell me a little bit more about this Rupp? Again, this is a made in Japan. This motor made for racing, and uh, double ram tubes, and it sucks the fuel in better, and uh, with with the uh, you know, what do you want to call them? Monkey back. bars. Monkey bars, handlebars. It was, they, they brought them back, but it really isn't what they wanted because you get down like this and it's hard to turn. You want them more straight. But it was hard to come, you couldn't come over the motor because the, the chassis were built and then the motors, they had to try to slip them in. It was very hard. One thing I want to go back on too, this all aluminum chassis. One thing that was really cool on the Scorpion here was the rear bumper. You know, we look at that and you say, oh, what the heck? Well, 
somebody can't get that to it hits you. But one thing, when you got it stuck, it was so easy to grab a hold. Right. Most of the snowmobiles had very little hit, you know, yeah, and you did get place. stuck a lot of times. Right. Very little hit, but this here was really cool. That was a super, super idea. It only lasted two, three years. Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of a break and then we'll continue with Waconia 2019 featured snowmobile skidoo, live from Waconia. Woo! Welcome back to 2019's Waconia Ride-In, featured snowmobile skidoo, but this ain't a skidoo, Volmy. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about what it is. Yeah, this is about as antique as you can get in the snowmobile world. I'm proud to have brought this out of Canada. It is a 1952 snowmobile. I'm trying to show that this is before the days of Polaris and Arctic Cat. This was built in the Prairie Provinces of Manitoba, and it represents the, one of the very, very first commercial production of any snowmobile. Um, and uh, back in those days, they didn't plow the roads, so basically there was a lot of small companies that were building these guys and uh, just to get to town. This was a necessary point of transportation. This cost $1,100 in the day as much as a car. And we'll go And then we'll start on the first pole. Anyway, it smells like a tractor. And like I said, look at this. 1952, and it was made in Saskatchewan before Polaris, before Arctic Cat. Very proud to see this. After this show, it's going into a museum up in Canada. I have, a, I have a question for Baldy. Okay, now I see this uh, this kind of a a belt here. How does that work? How yeah. do you how okay. do you make it how do you make it go forward? I'll tell you the answer to that. This is before the days of a centrifugal clutch. So you get on it right here. You get her going, and you move the motor. You tighten up the belt. It goes and it takes off. <laughs> see how it's, it's welded to slide on the pipe here. It, the motor moves but the rear axle with the driven clutch doesn't. And that's how it, it makes it move. It's got skis kind of here to hold it. And uh, is it steer very well, Baldy? In fact, it has no skis, it's got pipe. Oh, but, but see, this is what, what they tried, yeah. and this is what they started, and this is where <laughs> they went. And look what we're at now. It just makes it so much better. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey, something else is kind of unbelievable. Look what I got over here. A scorool? Les, let's go take a look at that. Let's go, huh? Ski Row was, was made up in Canada. And they had green, it was a green colored snowmobile. They made something like this color too. Now this is a more modern snowmobile. And look at, they put decals on the Ski Row. So this guy has to be a true old snowmobile lover to take his modern sled and make it a skidoo. I, ski Row. I think it's a bombardier the way it looks as a skidoo. But look at how he custom the shocks and everything. But yep. I've never seen this before. To nope. take an old sled. I think they quit in about 76, Sounds 1976. Right. Yep. Coleman owned them then. And uh, but this is cool. The colors and everything else. A snowmobile lover. <laughs> yeah. Wanting well, to relive the past, just like we've been doing here today, with some of the stuff that we've seen. We do have a couple more antiques we want to take a look at. Arctic Cat based out of Thiefer Falls, Minnesota. And uh, it's running, folks, so let's take a look at this one here. That's the colder motor motor. Again, we were using all we had back then. Mainly all we had back then is four-stroke motors. They're very reliable, but <clears throat> they, uh, they have a crankcase and everything else, four-stroke, and they were just a putt-putt motor. So they were really heavy, and this one here is just a rear, you know, it, it works on the same way. This is the rear reverse, forward reverse, and then his steer, steering wheel here, and this is the way you push the throttle. No brakes, you were just out enjoying it. 
Look at they even had an extra seat side here so that you could put two people, one on this side, one on that side. They're just uh, adventuring out in the wild. They had a chain cleated track. That's what they had back then. They never had a rubber track that would hold up to what they were doing. So that's great. It's kind of nice to be in an enclosed area. We actually have an enclosed snowmobile. Let's take a look, Rob. What the heck we got here? Now this is really super. Now look at this here. It's a car. It is a car. Yeah, it's a it's a snow coop. What they did is took a, a Voyager tra a track, wide track, and the motor, and then put built this body on it. This whole top slides back so you can get in it. See, then they didn't have a hard time getting in there, so they turned the handlebars upside down. Again, this is a lot like a car. It rode really nice, but I don't think you want to get off the trail. Right. Because I think you get stuck. Or, the only we're in produ production for about one or two years. It just yeah. didn't go over because it's a snowmobile. They want to be outside, just having a good time. Fun, having a great time. Yep. When you get plugged back in there, it's kind of like a you know, it's a it's a car. Sure, sure. That's super. Scorpion Mark II S300. Yep. 1968. You see how beautiful this is? How shined up and nice it is. They started making a bubble hood. The only thing they didn't have yet, they didn't have a tip hood. They, they still had, you had to loosen that up to get the hood off. Fuel tank in the front. Those nice chrome handlebars. One thing that's really cool about this, look at Insignia. Right. Trailer sled Scorpion. It was trailer sled first, and then it went to Scorpion. Nice thing about this, it's so easy. You can just tip it easy and run it. Again, this is using a, a Sax German motor and uh, very reliable with their own torque converter. Scorpion and Crosby, Minnesota made every, all their components except the carburetor, the motor, and the exhaust. Otherwise, they made everything. Skis, tunnel, track, boogie wheels. So they were self-contained. They had a, a lot of big work for, force for that. Oh, no. All right, let's go take a look at some old cats we got. Arctic Cat made a ton of these last. Sold a lot of them, too. Yes. They were very popular back in the day. This is a 1969 all aluminum tunnel with a slide rail. They were the first ones to really come up with a slide rail. Well, the older ones, but this one took for a fishing slide rail. They had leopard skin seats and clothing. Oh, they were magnificent. And they were a little bit wider, and there was more for riding on the trail than going through the... They put the motor in the front and the gas tank right here. It, uh, they sold a lot of these, 100, oh, eight, 50, 60,000 units. Sure, right here. Yep, and same thing over here, you see the one here too. This has the leopard skin pattern, and how beautiful they use the, the Panther. The Panther was a well-known uh, model sled. You see how the decal was on there. Again, manual uh, throttle and uh, brake. But uh, 18 to 17 inch wide track, cleaner track, fuel tank back here then, and uh, easier balance out, easier filling it without spilling. Cool tinted windshield. Make it look cooler. Look cool. Made you feel like you're going faster. And that's your goal. Yep, that was impressive. You can see here we had a little uh, owie here. Yep. Handlebars broke off. So that's another story, see. So that the main thing is like finding out the story. I've got one where the handlebars are scratched here. The guy got a little drunk one New Year's Eve and slid it down the highway. Oh boy. See, that's a character hat, you know, so right. just like this one here, it's a story. It's how much fun people had. And all snowmobiles have stories, and a lot of them are right here at the Lagonia Ride In 2019. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the Waconia Ride In 2019. What a beautiful day we got going on here in Waconia, live and direct. Uh, a little clouding up here now a little bit, but uh, what a still great day here, Les. It's all about the people, like you said. And uh, we got a 71 Evan Roos Skeeter right here, Les. Tell me a little bit more about that. Oh, it's a it's a, a 71 Evan Roos. Evan Roos tried to make some such modern things and everything else. This is a pop-up headlight, and this is where the gas goes in. And <clears throat> it was more luxury. It was uh, just a super luxury sled. Forward, reverse on it, all the controls, and they had <clears throat> 
under storage seat seated here. The problem with Evernew was it was heavy. And if you ever got that stuck, it was bad. But uh, it, it was luxury sled. This is a beauty. This is a really nice unrestored. Hey, look at this Rustler, 1968. And look at this neat thing. Never been started. This snowmobile has never been started, Les. Wow, now look at this. Now this is really wild. Look at how the windshield goes in the hood and then the aluminum look at all the chrome. chrome chrome skis, how beautiful it looks. Wow, look at here, it's got a twist grip. And a lot of times, you know, motorcycle people are so used to twist grip, they put that on there. And this is another JLO motor, 292 with a <clears throat> with it puts out about 13, 14 horsepower, but made in Germany. <clears throat> this company wasn't around too long. You see, everybody has a distinctive color in this did too. The headlights set back in here under the windshield. They had another model. This is a Rustler. They had a Hustler that the windshield come down here way high. And man, oh man, if you had broke that windshield, wow. But it would give you a lot of wind production. Again, <clears throat> nice seat, rear compartment storage. It was just so unique with a big, nice candle, uh, handle to lift up and stuff like that. It was, this is unique sled. You don't see them very much anymore. They, they only have made them out for two, three years. Then they were gone. So many companies left that had so many great ideas. Right, right. We got the Puma here, Articat Puma 340. Uh, anything on that one, Les? Well, what I think is cool is the big, we call it the big mouth hood. Big mouth See, hood, yeah. and get the air in and stuff like that. It's just so cool. One thing, it's, it's uh, <clears throat> it, the, the, the shape of it, Arctic always had a class. With the leopard seat and everything else, you sit back and rock with it. This was a super sledge. Very reliable. Yeah, that would get along. I kind of, kind of a big mouth myself. All right, we got the 1971 Chaparral Firebird. Yes, this is another model. This Chaparral was made in Denver, Colorado. That's where they were making them back then. <clears throat> they were importing the engines. They were using Hearth German engines. And then eventually they went into a, Jer a Japanese motor. But you'll see how this is a mid-mounted motor. And the handlebars went over it. Uh, still a classy, a lot of dealers for the, the Chaparral had, aluminum tunnel, their own distinctive seat that they had. <clears throat> Again, it's just another piece of great history. And then we're going to round things up here with a 1970 Herders Yucatat, another version from George Herders down in Wasika, Minnesota. Um, what a beautiful snowmobile. Spent a lot of time in the plant myself as a kid last, so... My uncle uh, managed the plant, George Winninger. So my father would say, you want to hang out with your in-laws or outlaws, or you want to hang out with me and George at the herder's plant? I spent most of my time in the herder's plant uh, as my dad and George were talking business. So beautiful snowmobile. It's been a beautiful, beautiful day out here at Waconia 2019 with my partner Les Pins. I want to say thank you for everybody for tuning in. And just a reminder, Waconia ride in 2020 is coming and we'll get you a location. But like Les said, it's all about the people, right Les? That's right, come out and enjoy, look at all the smiles. We got some kids in there and grown ups, everybody's smiling. You see clothing and accessories, that's unreal. They said, wow, yeah. I remember that. Right. And, but it's, it's such a fun day. Right, going back in history. Thanks folks, we'll thank see you, you again sometime. We want to thank everybody for tuning in here to the 2019 Waconia Ride-In. Soon to be the Midwest Ride-In for 2020. Folks, we're still sticking around, just a different loca location, and we want you to uh, pay attention to where we're gonna go. We'll get information out to you on Twitter and Facebook, and whatever we gotta do, emails, faxes, even if we gotta do a Pony Express, folks, we're gonna tell you where we're gonna be in 2020, the Midwest Ride-In. Make sure to check it out, and thank you very much for coming, everybody. We'll see you next time. Perfect.